Welcome back. This is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. Today I'm going to show you how to spin the Royal Tweed Blend into a lovely three-ply tweed sock yarn. This was the final blend when I dizzed it from my hackle uh, and I have a, a video that shows you how to do that. What we're going to uh, do now is I've divided this into three parts and we'll get to spinning it. This is ready to spin. So the uh, goal here is to do a uh, three ply sock uh, weight yarn. Uh, so fingering weight ideally. Um, sport weight at the thickest, uh, but I th I'm going to do a fingering weight. And uh, my singles that I'm going to be shooting for, for this, is going to be around 42, um, 40 to 42 uh, WPI. This might take a second to dial in, uh, because the last thing I spun on here was some art yarn, and it takes me a minute to get my uh, bearings here to make sure my tension's right. So when you have this nice um, tweedy effect coming in, you can see already, oh, I'm so excited. I've already got a little tweedy bit right there. I still do the plyback test. Um, it's not quite as accurate as when you're doing it and you're only gonna be doing a two ply because you can really get pretty darn close. Um, but the, um, obviously you're gonna three plies, so. <laughs> but it still gives me a good idea about my twist. And I've put that chart in here many times about the WPI um, for uh, singles for three ply from uh, Sweet uh, Georgia School of uh, uh, Fiber Arts. And again, this is comb top, so the fibers are all nicely aligned. That's why I'm uh, using it for a sock spin. Um, I made this the blend on a hackle and uh, I wanted to uh, make a blend uh, for uh, a Tweety sock. And uh, I think I'll probably just straight up knit this sock uh, because the Tweety is gonna do the work for me. <laughs> Although I say that now, but I tend to change my mind quite often. It's a good place. Against my hook. And let's just see what our single's looking like here. So that is right out of 40. Um, it's a little thinner up here, and that's more like a 41, 42, probably. My little tool only goes to 40, but it's a little bit thin. I got a little play in my 40 slot, so I know that's just a little bit thinner than a 40. And let's do our ply back here. So I can put even a little more twist in this. For sock yarn, a little more twist is fine. It'll wear better, a little better structure to it. And right now it's about 15, 15. So I need more twist. Uh, this does have um, some merino in it, so it can take a little more twist. So that's what I shall do. And we'll just continue on. And the, uh, the base of this is a Corydale. I think this is going to wear really well. And that white that's uh, coming through in here and some of this is my alpaca uh, that I processed and it's undyed. Let's see how this works with the twist. There we go. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but that is a lot better than the other one. Angle twist wise, I think we're there. So now we're at that 30. Magical 30. 
let's talk a little bit about drafting uh, techniques. Um, I don't think I've circled back around to this in a while, so I am making socks. Uh, obviously, everybody's always uh, searching for the long draw. Um, the long draw, when you do the long draw um, spin, usually, uh, well, it works best with a woolen prep fiber, like a carded bat, and it is going to uh, give you a, a woolen spin, which is a loftier yarn uh, that will um, not be as sturdy. Since I am uh, making socks with this, um, I, my goal is to do a, a short draw uh, and to um, kind of smooth those fibers down with my uh, right hand as I go. Um, but when you do a short draw, one hand remains stationary. Uh, and um, what I'm doing here is a short backwards draw. My front hand is kind of holding this and I'm, and I'm just drafting back and I'm pinching. Uh, long draw would be just pulling back and this hand isn't really doing much other than guiding and making minor adjustments. But right now, my right hand is keeping the twist from going too far up into the drafting triangle. Um, the other uh, one is the inchworm where your hands are kind of close together. And you kind of do this, this number here. You're just feeding out a little bit at a time and my back hand is stationary and my front hand is kind of pushing the yarn forward. Um, that is also a worsted spin. Um, and I'm looking for all worsted spin techniques for my sock yarn here. My front hand is pinching and I'm pulling with the back hand. And my front hand is controlling the twist and I'm not letting it get too far up in there and into my drafting triangle with um, this draw. So I am going, I made a worsted prep fiber and I'm doing a worsted spin. And that should give me the yarn that I want, which is going to produce a yarn that should uh, wear well for socks. I don't want to put all this effort into spinning this beautiful, consistent yarn and then um, have it pill up like crazy mad after I put all this effort into the yarn and then make a pair of beautiful socks. I don't want them to pill. I want them to last forever. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep on doing this. So if I was doing long draw, my, my front hand wouldn't be pinching, it would be almost doing nothing. Uh, so if you're not really saying what you're doing, I think sometimes it'd be hard to tell the difference between um, long draw and um, a, a backward draw. But I know I'm pinching with my hand a little. When I when I do when I do long draw, my my forward hand does practically nothing. I you may have even seen me many times. I just lean back and pull, and <laughs> and my right hand isn't even doing anything. And I talk with my hand. I'll be doing this. <laughs> so there you have it. That is the uh, the basic on the uh, worsted versus a woolen spin. Uh, and a worsted versus a woolen prep, which is why I usually, if I'm making a sweater or a scarf or something, I don't particularly pay attention to whether I'm drafting, uh, you know, short draw or um, long draw. I believe that most people and most fiber prep ends up being semi-woolen or semi-worsted, even if you're working with um, a worsted prep and you, you know, so you're not always doing a, a long draw. So then you get a semi-woolen yarn, which is fine. I don't see a problem with it. Uh, it just depends on what you want to use it for. So right now, I'm doing this because I have a very specific purpose. And my purpose is to make a pair of socks. And when I'm doing that, I want to make sure that my fiber is going to be the best um, preparation that I can make it be. So that I get the final product that I want. We'll do a couple more just like it and we'll fly them together. Here is the Royal Tweed Singles. They uh, came out to around a 40 WPI uh, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get these plied up for socks. All ready to go on the Lazy Kate. Um, I have it tensioned so that it's it moves easily but doesn't spin freely. So when I'm pulling on it, it's not gonna spin back on itself but not so tight that my uh, singles will break. 
um, because there's too much tension on it. Let's get started. All right, we are ready to three ply. I have my uh, three plies coming from my Lazy Kate, always directly behind me, or at least as close to directly behind me as possible. And I have my uh, three singles, uh, and I run them between my um, uh, index and thumb, long and index, and ring and long fingers. And uh, I have my leader already set. Let's go turn on my uh, flyer. Now I applied these Z, so I'm, I mean, I spun these Z, so I'm going to uh, apply these um, S. Alrighty. And I'm just trying to hold the um, fibers parallel. And we are shooting for a 30 degree angle apply. I want this to be nice and uh, tight for socks. Um, so I don't want it to be loose and fluffy uh, like uh, some of the other spins that I've done. Right, let's see if we like this. And I'm just going to do a quick little ply back test. And uh, so this is plying back on itself beautifully. It's got that nice little open loop at the bottom. Um, I like that. Let's see what the angle of ply is. So I'm looking at the uh, S here. I'm just trying to find a slightly different color so I can uh, see it clearly. It is exactly 30. So I like that a lot. I'm going to continue on. And again, I, um, I'm holding more of the pressure with my back hand. My front hand is just kind of sliding along uh, the fiber. And then when I have the twist I like, I'm just pushing the whole thing into uh, the orifice. And I am uh, doing this on the um, smallest whirl on my jumbo flyer so that it's giving me the fastest twist so I don't have to treadle as much. Well, this is a good place to measure for a flyback test. Nice white in there. See the uh, the white is right on that thirty mark. Love it. Let's see what our playback looks like. Looks great. Got that little tiny opening there. Very nice. I'm just gonna keep doing this, and then uh, I should be done pretty quick. This will take less than an hour, and uh, I will uh, see you back here to um, look at our finished journey. Hmm. I'm not liking any of these sounds. I don't think this is going to work. This is it. Brutal.
That looks great. You can see that. sometimes happens. I One of my singles broke, must not have had quite as much twist in there. Uh, and I just put it in, I usually just, because this is wool, it's really easy to spit on this. Just lick my fingers here and it's gonna just grab right in. Look at that. You can't even tell where it was. Completely smooth. That's the beauty of wool. It's not quite that easy when you have other slipperier fibers, but <clears throat> merino wouldn't be as uh, quite as easy to to do that too. You can still do it, but it just wouldn't be quite as easy. Oh, there's a nice big pop of. Uh, I may not want it that big of uh, tweed. Remember when plying, um, <clears throat> when you do your plyback test, which to me is very, very, very important, essential. Uh, if you have a problem in the ply, you don't have to worry too much. So if I let, I'm gonna let a bunch of extra twists run into this. Okay, now I'm going to do my plyback and look at how tight and coily and crazy this is. Um, so what I can do to fix that, because this is all tight, I don't want this to run onto my bobbin this tight. So what I'm doing is I'm going to drag my finger along this and then I'm pulling my back hand further back and I'm just sort of blending all that extra twist out. I'm just gonna run my hand down and I'm just gonna let it run back in. And now look, now we are back to the gentle twist with, let me see if I can do this over the, the gentle twist with the loop at the, the little open loop at the end here. So it's been corrected, easy to do. Um, and of course you can always put more twist in if you get in front of your, your orifice and you're like, you know, hey, not enough. Um, it's easy enough to fix that too. So this one here, um, this is a very nice ply for if you were doing a two ply. For a sock, I want just a little bit more twist on that. Um, but uh, if I want a little bit more, then I can just, treadle a little bit more before I let it go on to the bobbin. If you notice you're having difficulties, you know, constantly with either too much or too little twist, I would adjust your tension. Um, this wheel is a scotch tension, so when I adjust my tension peg over here, it adjusts how quickly it's going to pull it into the orifice and onto the bobbin. So if I am finding I don't have enough twist, then I would actually loosen this a touch and that would allow it to, to not get pulled into the bobbin as quickly, and I would be able to add more twist to it with my treadling outside of uh, the orifice before it goes onto the bobbin. And the converse is also true if um, I don't want that much twist. So like right now, I'm on the lowest, the, the uh, well, I should say, I'm on the smallest whirl, but the highest ratio, so my feet, it aren't moving very fast. If you, I don't know if you can see my feet in this video, but the wheel is moving um, a lot faster per treadle of my feet. Uh, so uh, I um, turned my tension a lot tighter than I normally would uh, because um, I want it to get in there faster so I don't over twist everything. I'm gonna stop and take a look at this bobbin here in a second. I'm really excited to see how it looks.
Here is the uh, three ply. Uh, I have a little bit of single leftover. I'm just gonna chain ply it onto the end and then we'll be uh, ready to uh, wind this onto the nitty knotty. Here is my final royal tweed spin. I love all the tweedy bits. Um, you can see, oh, it looks so good. Uh, so this, um, we'll, um, I'll get my uh, WPI tool and we'll measure. Uh, I think this is gonna be a lovely fingering weight yarn. And then this little bit I have left here, uh, this is the uh, bit I chain plied. And here we have 30 degrees, final twist. If you see the little green, follow the uh, 30 on the S side, which is the top part of the uh, angle. And just past my index finger is the 30. Follow that line down right to that green twist. And we are right at 30 degrees. And that is awesome. Hard to do this one-handed. I really should start bringing my uh, tripod out with me. So the end here with fulling, we're at 18. I know prior to I was around 20, but now we are fitting without any tension on it exactly in the 18. So this is a nice fingering weight yarn. That has given us a beautiful three ply fingering weight yarn of a tweed top that is ready for sock making. I will uh, post a picture of those socks when I'm finished. We'll see you next time. Uh, until then, spin happy.